Why are some cultures collectivists and others individualists? Well, the answer might be rice, and not metaphorically, but actually rice. There's a well-supported cultural theory called the rice hypothesis, and it argues that crops our ancestors farmed thousands of years ago still shape how we think, act, and interact today. And here's why. Wet rice farming is brutal, labor-intensive. It requires coordinated irrigation, synchronized planting, shared infrastructure. If your neighbor screws up the water system, your crops fail too. So rice farming communities developed intense social monitoring, strong social norms, and mutual obligation. You had to operate collectively or everyone suffered. Wheat farming, different story. It depends on rainfall, not shared canals. Households can operate more independently. You succeed or fail on your own efforts. So wheat regions develop self-reliance, autonomy, fewer social obligations, and more individualism. But this is more than just a nice story. Cultural theorist Thomas Tollum tested this within China. Same country, same government, same language, but rice regions versus wheat regions. The differences were measurable. In the rice regions, collectivism, holistic versus analytical thinking, social trust patterns, and these effects showed up in the urban population who'd never farmed a day in their lives. This matters because we tend to think of cultural differences as the mysterious or moral, or they're just like that, or worse, we judge them. But the rice hypothesis suggests that culture is structural. It emerges from external conditions. It's history we can actually trace. I write about frameworks like this on Substack at culturalperspective.com. Join us there.